All right then, gang. So we have come a long way and we've implemented authentication pretty well in this application now, both on the backend API and also in the frontend React application. But there's one more major thing I want to do. So at the minute, if I log in as someone, for example, Mario, once I do that and I go to the homepage, I see these workouts, but everyone is going to see these same workouts because these workouts don't actually belong to any user. Anyone can log in, add a workout, and anyone else can see them. For example, if I add sit-ups over here, load is zero, reps 40, add the workout, and we see it over here. Now remember these as well, arm curls, star jumps, and bench press. If I log out now, and I'm going to log back in as peach at netninja.dev, and then abc, abc, one, two, three, exclamation, log in, I see exactly the same workouts. So basically anyone can log in, add workouts, and every user is going to see the same workouts. Now what I would like is that when I log in as a certain user, I only see the workouts that I add. So basically, if I add a workout right here, it's added on the left. But then if I log out and log back in as someone else, I don't see that workout because that user didn't create that workout. So I'd like to make it so that everyone has their own workouts and they only see their own workouts over here. Now, in order to do this, first of all, I'm going to delete all of these workouts because these are all generic workouts. They belong to no one. So we're starting now with a blank slate. And now the aim is that whenever a user logs in and adds a workout now, we assign that workout to that user somehow. And the way we're going to do that is by adding a user ID property to each workout document when we save it to the database. So then we can look at that user ID and say that belongs to this user. So then if I log in as that user and we try to retrieve the workouts, I just have to retrieve the workouts where the user ID property on that workout document is equal to the user ID of the user logged in. I hope that makes sense. So let's implement this now on the back end. Okay then, so there's a couple of steps we have to take in order to implement this kind of functionality. The first one is to go into our workout model and we want to add on a new property. And that property is gonna be the user ID and this will reflect the ID of the user that's added the workout. So we're now associating every workout document with a particular user, if you like. So the type of this is going to be string and then also we want it to be required. So required is true. And that's all we have to do for the model. Now we're just saying, look, every workout document must have a user ID property. Every workout must be associated with a user. Okay, so now the next step is to assign the workout to a user when we're creating it. So if we go into our controllers and then workout controller, if we scroll down here, create new workout, this is where we add one. We want to basically add to this workout the user ID as well. Now, how do we do that exactly? Well, if you think back to when we created a middleware function over here, we added the user property to the request object before we called next, before we run those controller functions. And that user property is going to have an underscore ID on it. So that is the ID of the user who is making the request, the user currently logged in. So we can use this user property right here inside our workout controller functions. So from the request object, we get the user property. And I'm going to grab that down here. So inside this try block, I will say const user underscore ID is equal to request dot user dot underscore ID because we have access to that now. And we know we have access to that because if this check fails over here, if we're not authorized, we return an error. It's only if we are logged in that we find that user and attach it to the request. So we know we have it. So we grab that ID and we store it in this constant. And then all we need to do is add it over here. So user underscore ID. So now we're adding that to the workout as well. So what I want to do now is just go to the front end and add a few different workouts. Okay, so right now I'm logged in as Peach. So let's add bench press for Peach. Load is going to be 20 kilograms and the reps is going to be 15. Add that. We can see over here. We don't see over here who it's assigned to yet or anything like that because we don't see that user ID property. I'm going to add one more. We'll say sit ups and the load is zero and the reps is 25. Add the workout and we see that as well. So those two should be assigned to Peach, right? However, in the front end, 
if I log out and log in as someone else like Mario at netninja.dev and then ABC ABC one two three exclamation let me log in with him we still see those because on the front end or even on the server when we fetch all the documents we're not limiting it to only the current users so we'll sort that out later I just wanted to at the minute add these documents so let me add one more as Mario this time so I'll say push-ups and then zero and then 25 add the workout and now we have one by Mario as well now what I'm going to do is in Postman I'm going to try fetching all the workout documents now and remember this is a protected route so make sure you have your bearer token over here so I'm going to send this request and see what I get back and we can see now all of the different workouts right all of them no matter who created them but what you will notice now is that we have this user ID property so right here we have this one starting in 62 and this one starting in 62 as well right here oops this one and down here you can see we have this one okay they all start with 62 but one of them must be different yeah this ends in ED the one that we added for Mario whereas this one ends in DF and this one ends in df so these user ids now are different because these belong to peach and this one belongs to mario so now we can use this user id property when we're fetching all the documents to limit that fetch to only documents created by the current user who is logged in okay so back in the workouts controller let's go to get all the workouts this is where we want to limit it now what we want to do is first of all find out the user ID which again is attached to the request object remember so const user underscore ID is going to be equal to request dot user dot underscore ID so we have that user ID now and then when we find the workouts we can find based on certain criteria so we want to find it where the user ID property of the document matches this user ID so what we need to do is pass in that user underscore ID property right here and now this will only find the documents where the user ID property is equal to this thing up here so only documents created by the current logged in user and it's only going to send those ones back to the browser so let's go back to the front end and see if this works so then what I'm going to do is log in as peach at net ninja dot dev and then a password of ABC ABC one two three enter and now we can see we have these two workouts now we did see another workout flash in before that and we're going to sort that out in a second but don't worry too much about that for now at the minute we see these two workouts right and these are peaches workouts i'm going to add any old other one in load 67 reps for whatever doesn't matter so we see that new workout as well for peach now if i log out and then log back in as mario at netninja.dev and then abc abc123 i shouldn't see those workouts by peach only the ones by mario that i added before so there should just be one i think now that's an incorrect password let me try this again abc abc123 enter okay cool so again we saw those other ones flash up that were peaches but then we only see this push-ups one so that's right we're only seeing mario's data right now however the problem is we're still seeing peaches exercises the previous person's exercises right here and that's because it's still stored in our global state when we log out so even though i might log out right here now this is still in our global workouts state even though we're protecting it on the back end so what we need to do is when we log out we need to clear our workout state in the react application so that's pretty easy to do we just need to go to the front end over here source and then go to the hooks over here and we want to use the logout one because this is when we want to clear our workouts data now we need to grab the dispatch function but not from use auth context we want it from use workouts context because we need to update that context value the workout context and what we want to do is basically set the workouts to be just null so that we don't have a value for them like the initial value so let's do that let's import the use auth context hook first of all inside let me close these inside the use logout hook so i'm going to grab that and i'm just going to paste it down here and we'll change this to use workout context and use workout context or use workouts rather context 
All right, so now we can do the same thing down here, except this must be use workouts context. Now there's a problem here. We're trying to grab the dispatch from this context, but also from this context. And we can't have these named the same, but we can destructure as something else. So if I want to call this thing something else inside this file or inside this function, I can do by saying colon, and then I can call this workouts dispatch, for example. And then if I want to use this dispatch function, I just need to invoke this thing right here. So let's grab that. And we also want to dispatch the action right here. So workouts dispatch and the type of this dispatch is going to be set underscore workouts. I think that's what it was called. Let me open up the context again and check. Yes, set workouts and we want the payload to be null. So we say payload right here to be null because remember the workouts become the action payload. So I hope that all makes sense. When we log out now, we're clearing that global workouts state. So then let's try this out. I am going to now log out from here. So at that point, it should clear the global workout state. And when I log in as someone else, we shouldn't see that flash in first before we get the real workouts for that user. So let's try logging back in as peach at netninja.dev and then abc, abc123, enter. And now we don't see that other data before this data loads in. Awesome. And that, my friends, is this application pretty much finished. So hopefully now you have a much better understanding of how to implement authentication into the MERN stack. So then, my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well. You can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just nine dollars a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one